Blog Talk Radio. It is Sunday, August 6, 2017, and school is officially in. weird intro oh <laughs> really <Why? laughs> yeah it was like i don't know it was a little weird um so i'm mitch we are in here today and today's show is the simp pimps and bromancing the stone show and i am joined as always by my two illustrious co-hosts um the never romantical aaron Hello, everybody. And um, I'm guessing the 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 never hyper masculine ant. <laughs> that's that's pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. <laughs> so let's start the show off by um, kind of defining some of this craziness out here, like simp and pimp. So like. Like everything, there's a a dictionary meaning to it, and then there's a what we call a connotative, so a denotative and a connotative. So denotative is is always going to be your dictionary definition. Oh. Your connotative, and I taught this to you guys before. Your connotative meaning is all that shit that gets thrown onto it from socialization, from just being out there, from just living life. So simp in its most simplest de- you know, definition means a simple or a foolish person. So in that instance, I would think Rob Kardashian would actually fit the, the definition of simp. But uh, the herb dictionary or like the connotative meaning of simp is a man who puts himself in a subservient, submissive position under women in hopes of winning them over without the female bringing anything to the table. A man that puts too much value on a female for no reason. A man that prides himself with chivalry in hopes of getting sexual gratification from women. Like, all that kind of stuff. Now, the pimp definition is obviously a man who controls prostitutes and arranges clients for them taking part of their earnings in return. That's the definite, but we've had a zillion definitions of pimp now, like just thrown on to that definition. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a pimp is a cool, you know, a pimp is someone who's, you know, quote unquote player who has a lot of women um you know up there's that whole standpoint where like in the 90s where nelly was attempting to reclaim the term pimp you know and he was saying oh well he like made an acronym and was like oh pimp means uh oh my god what did he say it means uh positive intellectual motivated person oh my goodness Right, and then and, he, created and, a, he created a college scholarship for that shit. Really? Like, oh man. That's BS. Know. And and whole is short for honey. <laughs> 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 so like basically bullshit, huh? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so um, Wikipedia defines bromance. It's just because Aaron and I were talking about this off the air. Wikipedia defines bromance as a close, emotionally intense, non-sexual bond between two men that is exceptionally oh, tight um, and affectionate homosocial male bonding relationship. Homosocial. 
Not homosexual, mm. but homosocial. Which which actually goes into our definition of romance because it's it's you know, it's the whole your emotional bonding is for your bros and women are just mm-hmm. holes for you to use for their orifice. Basically. You know what's interesting to me about the um the the bromance definition? I see a lot of that behavior between like uh uh guys that I know that are like twins. That's different though, you think? I don't but that know, means twins? like like you <laughs> I mean, you form a special like, bond. Yeah, I mean, you form a special bond with that person because you were, you were split from the same egg. Yeah, oh. but that's why I said it's interesting when you see like you know that um that same type of behavior between like uh guys that don't share that type of situation. Well, I think, and like I was telling you before, Aaron, I think the only time that that's a problem is. Well, in, in sorry, let me let me frame this in the heterosexual sense because we were saying off air too that as a homosexual, it really wouldn't, or a like a lesbian situation, it probably wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> it probably wouldn't mean anything or mean right. the same thing. You know. Uh huh. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But, I mean, as far as, as far as you creating a bonding with, with your bro, there really isn't anything wrong with that. Except for when you are dysfunctionally using that relationship in lieu of creating a, a healthy relationship with the opposite sex if you are in fact heterosexual yeah I don't know it seemed I mean it seemed like there would be a complicated situation anyway wouldn't it you mean I mean but that's the way guys seem to carry on these days now especially especially for like um for like women that's not used to that type of behavior like let's say like alright let's say for example like you dealing with a woman that like um, you know, she wasn't, she, she, uh, had a father and like, she wasn't used to seeing her father behave that way, <laughs> you know? What do you mean? Like she wasn't used to seeing him be bromantical or she wasn't used yeah, to Yeah, like, him? you know, just like, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out with the guys and, you know, like the bros over hoes, like she just not, you know, that's not <laughs> typical, that's not typical behavior in her upbringing. Like for her to see something like that. It definitely like that, wasn't that was... in mine. Like I like I didn't grow up with the bros over hoes dad. <laughs> yeah, see that's what I'm saying. My oh, father wow. was, you know, my dad is a much more like well rounded, you know, kind of individual where he yeah. balanced his energies more. You know, he didn't right. have as as much of that. Because, I mean, I, I saw my dad be friends with his male friends. I saw right. my father inter, interact with women. You know, he was married to my mom and in divorce, and he's married again, and he interacted with his spouses. Like, that was never really an issue for me. But, see, my generation, Gen Xers, like, a lot of this backlash to, like, the whole 90s culture male, like, that's, that's the simp they're all talking about. Like, when you see p- people talking about scent now, they're, they're talking about, you know, boys to men on bended knee type of dude. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, but I mean, do you... As soon mean, as you, I get home you, from work, baby right, face type. <laughs> right, right. Yes, exactly. Like, I'll pay your rent. You know, I'll cook your dinner too. I'll rub your feet. I'll, I'll cra- pay your credit card bills. I, like... I mean, I get it. It's a little over the top. Yeah, it is a bit much sometimes. That over the top sensitive, you know. So, is Ant still with us? Can you still hear us, Ant? You there? You he, he should be here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, I can hear y'all. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I yeah. I didn't realize I was muted. I was giving y'all jewels. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dang. Oh, okay. Okay. So, what jewel <laughs> would you give it us? Go ahead. I was just saying, like my pop, like you said about your dad. You, I didn't grow up with a bros over old kind of dad either. Like I saw my dad. Now that I think about it, interact more with women than he did with his friends. But his friends were still around just as much. Yeah. 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 I, I think yeah, I'm pretty sure my dad was the same way. Pretty much, it was just like you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the baby face. As soon as I get home from work, saying yeah, that's that's a lot of extra. Well, like the whole because women started to you know swing out there a little too far. Like I always say about people, people are not really good at being at at tempering themselves. They're not really good at yeah. moderation. They swing from one extreme of a pendulum to the other, and they can't keep themselves regulated and they need to work on that no balance <laughs> i agree because life is about balance you can't fucking function if your ass is all the way left or all the way right that shit is fucking bogus you yeah. know like the word simp should not be used to describe a man who loves his wife and his children i was gonna ask about that Did they say chivalry counts as something yes chivalry. yeah pretty much i don't know I don't agree with that. Well, it's because... I, I mean, I do agree with, with part of it. Like, you shouldn't be chivalrous just to get pussy. Oh. Um, you should do it because it's the right thing to do. People should respect one another and treat one another well because that's what the fuck you should do. That's why. Yeah, well, right. you know well, you know how that, that... I think that type of mentality flies around because... You got these, you got these like idiots out here that just they see a guy, um, you know, doing something decent for a female, you know, and maybe they into that female and she ain't giving him no play, but you know, she think that the guy mm -hmm. that you know, the guy that's being nice to her, you know, she just like, oh, he kind of sweet or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And the guy that's not getting that attention, he looking like, oh, he just doing that so he can get what I'm trying to get. And like that's how that I feel you know like that's what? how that type of I feel like that's about. a dick decision. I feel like that's a dick decision right there. And we'll talk about dick decisions <laughs> later, but <laughs> I mean I agree. Like, I agree with Aaron though, because I've experienced that. Yeah. I've experienced I think that. Like, almost, I, hold for everybody. I think almost a, I think almost all guys who are who are like or who are balanced because I have a most of my male friends are like you guys. Like my like my in my own age group, they're balanced. Uh -huh. They're you know they're somewhere in between this whole. They're 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 more masculine than they are feminine, but they're in touch with both, and they can you know be cool, being sensitive. They can be cool, being you know what you would what we would call socially more masculine. But um they. They got a decent amount of female attention. Right. So then he's like hating ass dudes who sit around all aggy. Yeah. And then they well, throw that stereotype they around. Assholes. Well, I mean, they want to be assholes and still get women. Like they just want to be. Wild exactly. And, and the assholes. only and the only way and the only way for that to work is for them to you know throw a stereotype out about a dude that's just being genuine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or for them to acquire things and to to have some leverage to pull women in. But when men use things to get women, you get the Academic. kind of women who want who want things. Mm -hmm. Well that that's that whole hyper masculine you know, culture where you're chasing money so you can get women instead of cultivating a personality so you can just be a decent human. Right, because it's much, it's much more difficult to do that. Oh, yeah. Definitely but, I mean, it's and, it, and it takes it's somebody it, who's about it it, Well, it is worth it, but it's not a, a, a man or woman thing. Everybody should be fucking cultivating a personality. Women shouldn't be Lay on their back with their fucking pussy in the air to get men, and men shouldn't be using money to get women. Like everybody should be right. fucking developing their personhood. 
if you want some quality shit, everybody keeps talking about how they want quality, men and women. I want quality. You don't want quality. You're fucking superficial and shallow when you don't have a soul. Right. <laughs> I want to put the work in. You got to put the work in. You know what, that's, right. why, that's, exactly. that's what was... That's what was annoying me about that whole that whole independent woman thing when Neo and them started making those songs. And uh, like, like Miss, I want an independent woman, Miss Independent, and all this BS. I'm just like, yo. Like, you know what? There isn't anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with you know getting out there and doing things for yourself. But if our energy, if all of our energy wasn't needed, it wouldn't be here. No. We're meant to balance each other, so we need each other. And acting like you don't need each other when you do need each other, to me, that's just whack as shit. It's immature. And it's really hurting us, and it's hurting our communities. Like this, 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 you know, hatred back and forth between black men and black women on all over YouTube and all over the internet. That shit is toxic. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. But then you know how it is. Some deeper issues, but. You know how it is. You can't be. You can't be too nice to the opposite sex, because then all you trying that just mean that all you trying to do is get with them. <laughs> <laughs> see, like that's that. See, that's what's crazy about it. But I've been told by just you know, there's countless dudes that are. On there, we'll talk about MGTOWs later too, because they did some fucking cult stupid shit. But um, <laughs> that that basically, you know, saying all this crazy shit, like, you know, you should never be nice to to the opposite sex. There is no other reason to need the opposite sex, but as an orifice to squirt your semen in, apparently. Oh gosh, that sounds so pleasant. I mean, Very look, desirable. I feel like that there's a bunch of hurt ass people out there in these mm-hmm. streets. And instead of dealing with their fucked up problems and however they got to this place, like my mom ain't fucked up me. And you know what? And you'll see these MGTOWs and these, you know, hyper like feminists or whatever, all on there talking about It doesn't have anything to do with... It has everything to do with who fucking hurt you personally, you fuckhead. Yes, it does. Because you never let it go. Because you never let it go. And you're sitting on YouTube, posted up in some mass marketed organization. Okay, using that shit like a a fucking self-medicating drug. You gotta take care of that shit. Yeah, that's that's not a lot of people's strong point taking care of it. Well, because they don't want to deal with shit that's deeper or that's on the inside. They just want to do superficial work, like you know, get a weed for pecking plants, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, man the fuck up, man up, you know. Yeah, that's another that's another issue though. Like with the music though, because you would expect that, like in most cases, like music is an outlet for those expressions that you know people don't really like, you know, um, uh, right. tap into like publicly. You know what I'm saying, but you know when you when you record in or whatever, you know, like a lot of that stuff should you know be like. Um, an outlet. It should be an outlet for that type of stuff, but we don't hear that in a lot of the music nowadays. It's just like, it's just a, you know, like you said, phoning it in, you know, with the well, BS that the, they don't copy from somebody else. A lot of the issues are, like we were talking before, like absence of, of men in their lives to guide them. You know, when you don't have, like, you know, when you don't have the man there or the men there in your community, either your father or some sort of male surrogate to to guide you and or, you know, your mother, because 
the reason why I'm saying your mother is because if the man isn't there and your mother becomes your all encompassing everything, a lot of times, especially in our communities, the mothers become this overbearing force. Who like usurps your yeah, who like either usurps your manhood or does the opposite. She creates a situation where you become the man, her husband, you become a surrogate for her her significant other. Like both of those things are damaging I, itself. I personally have a problem with that second one. Cause I see both it all the time on my her. Facebook. I see it all the time on my Facebook. Like mm-hmm. they're always talking about like all I need is him and him is my all and like this is your mm-hmm. child. This is not your yeah, right. other. Exactly. Yeah. Not your husband. You need guidance, not like your your affection like that. Yep. Like come on. That and but I mean they're both very damaging because in in both scenarios you have the potential for the boy growing up in that in that trying to become a man becoming a misogynist like hating women because man boy syndrome yeah baby boy fuck boy <laughs> exactly, exactly. Fuck boy. <laughs> Jody Jody <laughs> riding a fucking a grown man on a bike. Yo, what's up with uh, Philly and grown men on bikes? Man, Philly and oh, grown oh, men on bikes. Don't talk about, don't talk about the bikes, man. I get my, uh, I get my end to go bike program yeah. more. You know, I got ain't my end to go with it. Ain't nothing wrong about, with it. I'm, not, I'm talking about these grown ass men in Philly on girl bikes. Get the fuck out of here. You that. know what I'm talking about. They be some drug dealers. Whenever you see these <laughs> grown ass men on girl bikes, <laughs> Philly. Motherfuckers are doing roll-bys on a bike. Making making drop-offs. Like, come on now. Yeah, that goes on too. Like, but I mean that's a that's a good segue because in the so we we were we all watched the documentary The Mask You Live In. Um, it was written, directed, and produced by Jennifer Seabell Newson. And she mm-hmm. was talking about, you know, like the effects of you that, growing up in a Netflix. household. Yeah, it's on Netflix. So anybody who wants to watch that, it wasn't homework. You didn't have to watch it, but you know, it's a good watch if you want to watch it. It, it just talks about um, how we view manhood in America. But she was talking Not about really. like, yeah, about how, you know, growing up, not her, but like, some of the speakers talking about and some of the, the the young men talking about growing up in a household where your father is a drug dealer or like you have this hyper male presence right and what that does to you yeah because that's that's initially that's what's being passed now like uh constantly yeah. but you know what um what I equate that to, if you look at like um, like samurai culture or whatever, like they mm. train all day to fight. They train all day to fight, but they all go home and they write poetry or they garden or something like that to balance it out. Like write a fucking haiku, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't do stuff like that. I love haiku. And we by the need way. to like, and that, but that's who doesn't love haiku? Haiku is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a haiku right there? Was that a haiku right there? It might be. Who doesn't love haiku? <laughs> That's funny. That's I don't know. Mr. Mi- Mr. Too. Sound sound like Mr. Miyagi might be the perfect father figure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they call him um, a demonic child beater. Didn't they? Child child beater. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna be caping right now for Mr. Miyagi. He taught you how to harness your <laughs> your your masculinity energy. and your energy but then he taught you how to balance that shit out yeah which are, that's what yeah. we need you need to be balanced i agree you can't be out here just waving your dick around at everything and thinking that shit is fucking cool all the time <laughs> no not all of it put your <laughs> dick in your pants put it away <laughs> Stop making fucked up dick decisions and use use your big head. Use the head on your shoulders. 
Speaking of which, what's up with the dick pics? Like, I don't understand that shit. That shit Yo, is, let I, me tell I you don't... something. Dick pics replaced, like, dudes trying to kiss you. That shit shocked the crap out of me too that, when it first happened. Is that the new Catch a Girl, Freaky Girl? Oh my no, goodness. It's like, send, it, no, it's like the new... Send a dick pic. It's the new way that 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 males lay that shit literally on the line. Like this is how I feel about you. <laughs> so they're trying to fucking kiss you. They send you a collage of their penis. Oh the god, the whole collage. Look, my guy whole brother. Collage? He, he 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 has a penis collage. It's like it's got oh, black and white. God. It's got color distortions. It got. <laughs> He has a collage it's got, of penis filters it's got, on it? It's got, it's got sepia. It's a sepia oh penis. Oh, yeah. It's got filters <laughs> and shit. Oh, no. Tell him to stop that. He loves, I mean, that's just that. funny, though. It, I mean, it's hilarious, I need that, actually. But. We need that meme that says, what are you doing? Oh, no, Boogie, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 to send you this dick collage and we call it that too we call it a dick collage that's hilarious <laughs> It was crazy about it, like um, when I first realized that it was a thing. Like I had heard about um, you know, like kids and shit doing that stuff, like in high school and shit. And I was like, with like you know, it was just like you know, this would these kids is into now. And like you hear about grown ass people doing this shit, I'm just like, well, uh-huh. oh no, it was grown, it was grown ass folks that started that shit. Because when uh, so funny story, when I was teaching y'all the year I was teaching y'all, um, I was in my classroom and I think you guys might have walked in and. I got a dick <laughs> sent to me, <laughs> and I happened to go, oh, oh my God, it's my friend, because I pulled it up on the school computer, like, oh, my boy sent me an email. It was his dick. <laughs> and I had to minimize that shit real fast so y'all didn't come in like, what the fuck is that a dick? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like and that shit's oh, funny. No. Like, there are versions of dick pics, like, like you know how dudes will... They'll put it. They have different names. They have different no, names. No, they'll they'll put it next to something so they can show it to scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. What the? F- yeah. Like, like, look at my dick next to this can of hair oil spray. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I've done it. Upon request. Upon request. Like, my, look, look at my dick in comparison to this pink oil spray can. This pink oil spray can ain't got shit on my dick. That's when really? I was young and immature. That's crazy. When I was young and immature. I'm look, that shit is done. It's been done. And it's been going. Because yeah. that shit was, that was 2003, what we talking about. Yeah. When I, when I first received my first dick pic over the internet. That's played out. And that played shit out. Is, it, it look, it shows no signs of dying down is what I'm trying to tell you though. <laughs> the trend or <laughs> never mind. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the worst part though, like the worst fucking part though, the worst time was when like everybody was webcamming and you didn't just get a dick tick. Now I have to watch you like deal yeah, with it. Show. I don't fuck no yeah, come on, man. Like and that shit would come out of no fucking where. I felt like I was being raped. Yeah. I was being I was being web raped. I was being web raped. I was, I, was being <laughs> I was gonna ask if that's comp- if that's comparable. I would just sh- but see I, you I can turn them down. Like I can turn those off. I can turn you got the a picture coming off. in and you don't know what it is. You got a picture That's coming true. in and you don't know what it is until you That's open true. it. It is. It, it, I mean, it's raping. It is. Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, how do you guys feel about that? Aaron? I don't I think do I know it. how Aaron like feels it. about it. it. Feels about what? Dick pics. But I don't, I don't indulge. I don't okay. indulge either. That's I don't good. indulge either. Yeah, I don't think I've but, ever sent one of those. I, I mean, if I request your dick to be sent to a pic, then you're fine. I don't even think I've yeah. ever done it on request. 
I'm kind of I'm uncomfortable with it now, but I'm less I'm I'm um I'm more comfortable with the solicited ones than the unsolicited ones. You know what I mean? I mean, if I'm you uncomfortable could, with it all together. Right. I don't. Now, I don't. I don't I was, see an issue. But like, if you are asking for it, and please yeah. don't ever put your face in these things ever. <laughs> yeah. You're going right on. You're going viral. You're going viral. Okay, that shit is going. It's getting posted right up on Snapchat. We're going to add your and, face of appointment. And <laughs> IG. It's just it's going right up there. I've actually done that before when a guy sent me an unsolicited dick pic. You didn't add his job, did you? <laughs> 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 Don't don't at his job. I didn't at his job, but I was like, if you send me one more, these motherfuckers, I'm about to make this shit. It's getting ready to be real popular out there in cyberspace if you send me one more, these motherfuckers. Yeah, you definitely we gotta be brave as shit to inbox that joint or somebody too. Are you crazy? People DM blowing up with dick pics and all that shit. I couldn't imagine. Hey, where you going? I mean, I mean, like that's what DMs are for, as far as some people are concerned. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, I got a safe place to send you my penis. Instagram DMs be crazy, dog. Yo, they be wilding out here. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't don't do those either. I don't. You you got. Aaron has a group chat going on Instagram that I barely even check or respond to. I don't do the DMs at all. No, I use I use DMs for fun. Like I send like I send like memes and stuff, but like I, I got I got a crazy one recently. Like it was just um it was a girl. I was just like talking I was talking junk, you know, flirting and shit. And like I got this strange DM talking about some twenty dollars if you try. I'm like what? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, well, you on Instagram? What do you mm-hmm. expect, man? It's a new back page. You know what? Back so going, going I, I'm going international. Like, but I feel like that just promotes that that whole pimpish, pimpish culture, shit like that. That's sad. It, it really is sad. I don't know. It just. It's, it's, it feels like shit is not special anymore. Like, nothing is. No. No. I, and I get there was always porn out there. And, you know, God bless, bless porn sometimes, too, because it keeps people from... Some people from becoming, <laughs> like, fucking crazy. But at yeah. the same time, like, I don't, I don't feel like everything should be turned into porn via... What's yep. that? Uh, like... What's that rule number forty two or rule number I can't remember what it is. Internet rule number whatever that everything can turn into porn or everything that can uh, <laughs> Right. <everything. laughs> like uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, it's it's um it's it's like uh people that's talking about that type of stuff too, like how like the uh the porn industry is messing up these boys like they not they're not getting a decent idea of what what sex is like. They just they just oh, emulating no, no. this this stuff they seeing, and they don't know like they don't know that that's not real. It's like it's like what we talk about with the music. Like people listening to this shit, yeah. and they don't know that this is not what real music is supposed to sound like. Okay, you enjoy it or whatever, but it's like you know, well, it's, it's, the the, it's the pornification. It's rule number thirty four. Well, never yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you you don't pornify everything. Like you stop stop doing that. You don't pornify. You, like we're we have bastardized all our relationships with boiling them down to the lowest level of their interaction. Mm. People are easier. more people are more complicated. No, but it's not easier. You if it were easier, everybody would be happy, wouldn't they? But they're not. The fucking Is it anger. Easier? easier to copy it? 
it's definitely easier to replicate, but nobody is happy. So that should tell you something. You're you're again, mm -hmm. like we talk about being low vibrating. You can't be out here low mm -hmm. vibrating. You gotta bring yourself to a higher level of consciousness or you're or you're not living your life. You're walking through with zombie fire, you're numb, you're you know, how much pussy can you get and feel anything? After a while, you become numb to it. Right. And why is that the goal even? Like why is your manhood so like that isn't the only thing that makes you a man or should make you a man? Or like Well that goes know. that goes that goes back to these that goes back to these um these kids with no fathers that don't have anybody explaining that to them. Or the ones with fathers that, you know, that's all they're explaining to them that, you know, uh, this, is your, yeah. this is your right of passage of being a man, you know. That reminds me of remember the wire, the the, um, mm -hmm. the season where where they were in a school and that that son I can't think of his name, um where where his mother was the one who was pushing him to sell drugs. Uh, um, um the one with the puffball. Yep, that was my boy. I loved him. What? Uh, what was his name? Um. I can't think of his name, but that but, the, was, uh, but, but that cop took him in. He took him out of that situation and raised yeah, him he because out the hood. Well, because his his dope dealer father, he was like he kept telling his mom, I don't want my son raised the way that I was behaving. Right, I'm right. fucking here behind these bars and I can't fucking get out. So he was telling her this hyper masculinity shit, I don't want my son learning that. I thought that was cool that they did that too, though. Me too. Because Pop, Pop was Pop was the man in the street. Everybody looked up to him. I can't remember his name, but he's the guy that's on the memes, on all the memes. Was it? It wasn't Bogey, was it? It was no Bogey was. It wasn't Bogey. No. It wasn't Bogey. Yeah, it was. What, um, oh my god! I can't remember his name. It was Weebay. It was Weebay. Weebay, Weebay, son. Yeah. Yeah, it yep. was Weebay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is. Um, that's first period right there, and we got to figure out. Did we get? Did we get who we knew for? Uh... We got some good candidates for um out to lunch today. Out to lunch. I don't see what's wrong with the ASAP mob. <laughs> I think the ASAP ASAP mob fits in there perfectly. And what you think? Um. Mm. I mean, yeah, they they pretty good candidates. I feel like it's other people though. There's other people out here. Oh yeah, of course. There are, but I mean, we. So speaking of rapey, oh. um, I think everybody saw that ASAP ASAP Bari shit that went viral. Yeah. Did you see academics commenting on that with that Instagram model? Yep. That was rapey too. Yep. And so were the comments that I, that I heard. Uh, no, on the Joe Button podcast, that dude, um, oh. what's his name, Maul, when he was talking about Maul. how about how groupies, you know, think it's supposed to have a voice now, and it used to be back in the day that groupies kept their mouth shut and basically opened their whole mm -hmm. like a fucking soul. like the shit is rapey, dude. <laughs> is that the one when they were talking about R. Kelly? Yes, because he started that, talking yeah. about ASAP Bari in conjunction with the R. Kelly um, pimp shit. I the issue is that, that I mean he, R. Kelly was very different though. But but he was talking about how he was framing it was saying that women like that or of that ilk used to know their place. Like if you are the person who needs to treat someone else less like a human, so you can feel like a human. That means your humanity is called into question as well. There's something wrong with you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you feel it's okay to degrade somebody else because they're allowing you to? That should not come into your consciousness to do. That's a, a problem with their morals. Their morals and their values. I mean, so the whole, you know... Bari thing whole like generation. oh wait a minute you just you just fucked my assistant 
or whatever. Now you gotta fuck me too, cause I feel so. Like, dude, so you, you don't gotta wrong, fuck anybody. Way wrong for that. Yeah, people, people who have this like crazy obsession with having control over something or someone, like that's why yeah. I think that's why I got this. I got this um, theory that that's why white people love dogs so much. People love dogs okay. because dogs are not judgmental. I love dogs. Too, like. I love dogs no, I'm talking too. about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about white people. <laughs> <laughs> Their obsession well, is a lot different than ours. They, I don't know. Like I like kissing your dog in the mouth stuff. And I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Me. My dog drinks out the toilet when I'm not looking, so I'm not. I'm doing not. That. I'm not gonna make out with my dog. That's... No. Yeah, people, people like, I'm not saying everyone white does that. I'm just saying that's 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 nasty. Whoever does it, don't do that. Yeah, people like exactly. to control stuff. They do, and, people. And, and, and that shit is about power. You know, a lot of times more than it's about sex, and it's, and unfortunately, without with with us and our black men, it's about feeling powerless. I remember. Right. A, that's what a you know. You know what? I'm glad we talking about the ASAP mob right now too, because um, like that's that's the part that annoys me about like when people pick and choose what they wanna what they wanna um discuss. They pick and choose what they wanna um critique. Like um, I don't know if y'all seen the um the interview with ASAP Rocky and he was talking about uh ASAP Rocky. And he was talking about he was talking about um how he didn't he didn't feel like it was his place to talk about black lives and all this other and all this other type of weird shit. And it's like <clears throat> it's I like you for what he had to say when he said that. Huh? I said I thought checking for his opinion on something when he said that. Exactly because that that's what pisses me off about it because like we just got done saying it's like you know you wanna you wanna sit there and have power and control and you know this particular situation or that particular situation wanna talk about these these bitches this this bitches that and then like all of a sudden you know when it comes to talk about something serious it's like oh well you know oh that ain't that ain't my place yeah well, like a, all of a sudden that's a Peter Pan fuckboy it's because you want and we. We've been down this road before too. They want all of what they feel the benefits are, and none of their responsibility. <clears throat> but that, but the point I was trying to make is that, like, you know, it's like, like you said, like, you know, we feel powerless in a lot of situations, and it's like, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes, when it comes to the um, the argument of, you know, whether he's influential as an artist or not, you know, what I'm saying, like, um. It, his uh, his opinion might hold some weight, you know what I'm saying, for somebody mm-hmm. that's younger, listen to his music or something, and it's like, uh-huh. you know, um, it's like why why can't you why can't you be powerful in that in that particular aspect of your um your your artistry, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, but you but you, you like you said, you use that power to. To degrade everybody else, you know, to make every, you know, make women feel lower than you, to make, you know, these simps feel lower than you, that type of stuff. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like the whole, like the, the, the fucking hip hop trope of, like, like the the easy way to prove your fucking manhood is to fuck everybody else's girl. Like, what the? Right. That shit is annoying too. That shit is really annoying. I agree. I agree. So I mean, like, like your your manhood is based off how you dress, your ability to fuck everybody else's girl, and whether or not girl. you can can go to jail or and and or make money more than everybody else. I see a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or how hard you can smack a bitch. If that you know comes into play as well. Of course you can't say that. Of course you can't say that out loud anymore anymore because if you do that kind of shit for another hour. Yeah. If you do that shit out loud now, like you know, that's gonna get you booked. Yeah. The whole shit'll be dead. It you know because I mean we're we're walking out. <laughs> around here in a state of reform where 
because that's the reason why we're having this discussion about Asa Bari. Like years ago, this wouldn't have been a thing. Right. So because we got over. yeah, it, it would have been expected, and that, that's what Ma was talking about on on um, Joe Budden's podcast. Like that shit would be, would would have been expected, but much like Bill Cosby dumping quaaludes in your drink was also expected, but that shit is still raping. Yeah. Like you can't fucking do that. And like have it be okay. My parents are in the other thing um, we didn't talk about with Aesop um, Rocky is that whole Rita Ora situation. You can't even so, sound on that. I didn't really, I didn't really get too like much the whole into that. Rita. Well, he basically he was in a relationship with Shamil Iman, and he, you know, was you know like he loved her and they were together. Like that was his boo. Mm-hmm. And if you ever saw their pictures together, like you saw him, he just, like he was booed up with her. They were boo loving with each other. They loved each other. So if you wanted to be with her, then be with her. If you're going to step out on her, and he did, he was cheating on her. But, you know, I mean, we don't know how many, but we definitely know with Rita Ora. And Rita Ora apparently, I guess, ran her mouth, you know, behind the scenes that we never saw and fucked his. Um, his whole thing up, or his whole relationship up with with Chanel Iman, and they broke up. And then he outed her on record, and you know said, you know, I, you know, I came in her mouth basically and kicked her out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I come from an era where men didn't do stuff like that. Mm. When did it change? When did it change? Where, but I mean, you have all these fuckboys justifying his behavior, saying, you know, fuck that bitch, Rita Ora, fuck her, and she got what she deserved. I'm like, see, back, like, you you can't have it both ways in these scenarios. You can't be a fuckboy. You either gotta be a hyper masculine dude that doesn't do feminine shit, or a feminized dude who does feminine shit. You can't be a hyper masculine dude who does feminine shit. Um, isn't that young thug? <laughs> That's all these fuck boys. Like he he out of record. That's considered something a woman would do. Yeah, yeah, true. Is go back telling and running your mouth. Yeah. That's not like that's not pimpish or that's actually more of a like a, a, a quote unquote feminine trait. That's why I never I don't get that with this new generation. They mix the nastiest versions of male and female that they can do. And women too. Like they, they're they're like more they're too aggressive. They're like they're mixing all the worst parts of a man and a woman together and spitting out this bullshit. <laughs> I don't I don't know. How come you can't mix the good shit together? Well, that that balance you were talking about. Yeah, like like how come you can't be be a man who's patient and 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 um loving and understanding and be a woman who you know um supportive and knows when to shut the fuck up sometimes. And being silent and strong in some instances. Yeah, yeah, it don't it don't usually work like that apparently. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it, but I guess I'm sure um, some folks will disagree, but I think it has a lot to do the way. Um, The way we see our parents behave? The way we see our parents behave and the way we behave in our communities, unfortunately, now. And the way we yeah. have been for a long time. Like, a lot of shit, you know, contributes to that, too. Like, I always talk about the whole Peter Pan syndrome. Like, you know, unfortunately, hip-hop contributed to, you know, this, this function of 
men in being in Never Neverland because in hip hop, the worst thing you can do is be an adult. Is to ever is to grow up. That's why you see all this backlash to Jay Z's 444 and him talking adult shit because they all live in in Neverland. Yeah, I think it's, only- um, I think it's um more the what we see happen like you know with um with older people a lot of times like you got like we live in a generation now where it's like you see uh these these younger like the younger generation we've seen our parents uh like struggle and it's like oh i watched my mom work her whole life or i watched my dad work his whole life he ain't get nothing out of it and it's like i'm not trying to go out like that you know what i'm saying so like you got uh you know the the generation that follows after trying to you know live as fast as possible or you know trying to burning yeah. themselves out or trying to find other ways to not fall into the same situations like um like that video we were watching where they were talking about like how like why millennials don't uh aren't buying property the way the previous generations were and all that type of stuff and it's like I think it's a result yeah. of um you know just watching our parents you know what I'm saying it's like I'm not trying to um you know see myself uh be the same way yeah the only problem then is are you really living your life though you're not you're <laughs> right. not living you're not living your life you're just existing I think the expectations have changed though you know like it's not I really definitely think, for us to... yeah I think it's definitely yeah. and that that along the line, after like my my parents' generation, people's values bottomed out, and right. people just became ultra materialistic, and that's that's kind of where we are, and where people have just remained. Unfortunately, it's that, like hyper materialism is a is fucking insane. It's not even like 80s level. Like 80s level was something even because they pushed values. Family values were still being pushed during the 80s, even while you were pushing this hyper. Um, right. It was all. It was all types of shows to promote there too, like silver yeah. spoons and shit like that. And family ties. You could tell by you could tell by the family shows that came on at the time. Nothing but family shows at the at, at the time, like you know, different strokes right. and. Even and though then, you had you know, some Earth weird Earth. ones, but yeah, but everybody yeah, was a family. And you did things as a family, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. small wonder, which was weird, I but think, still a family. Get to those days. Get to those days. Well, you know, and I was watching a react show on YouTube, um, the Fine Brothers react show, and they were talking about how, like, the kids were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe all these family shows used to be on!" Like, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it, it's crazy. It's, it really is that bad. Like, <laughs> well, like, they I mean, don't, family they don't, isn't promoted. Yeah, they don't. They don't understand. They don't see the uh, how the uh, problem how problematic that is. Yeah, I see it. We see it. We yeah. see it. But we know better. Yeah, that's what. Well, that's because like you know, especially me and you, like we the last generation that seen that that understand the difference. Yeah. 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 And like it's crazy. Like you uh, even got you got you got people nowadays, like especially people our age, that's just like, you know, like I said, it's like what we what we see our parents do with like a lot of times like we grow up and we see oh our parents sacrificed everything for us and like you know like they didn't and we look at it like oh they didn't really you know live their life the way that you know I want to that I want to live I want to live my life in a way where I don't have to sacrifice everything for my kids. So you got people that's like. I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? I just want to wild out as much as possible, you know? And then when I finally do settle down, it's going to be at a point in my life where, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm burnt out. And that shit is unhealthy <laughs> because now that is unhealthy. you're scrambling, trying to, you know, get to a place where you settled yourself and you can reconcile yourself. Like, and I, and I hate to say this to y'all, but y'all generation I think the one after you, what they call Generation Z, I think they're going to be okay. They're very different than you are. Well, your younger cohort, they're very different than, they, than, than the younger cohort of your generation. I think they're a lot more 
traditional and more balanced. I've I've like been around them a little bit. They're a little different, but well, they got different. They got different types of values that they see us um, portraying that they got to stray away from too. Yep, because that's what happens mm-hmm. though culturally. You see a generation, and then you see a backlash to that. So I think right. the one yeah. under you is like, the fuck are these idiots doing? I ain't doing that shit. And they're going exactly. the opposite. Yeah. They're going the opposite direction. Like the fuck? How you forty four in the club? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, like and, I mean, and but that's what's gonna happen to them because they're and unfortunately because your generation largely doesn't respect what came before it, the ones that come after them will not show any respect to their generation. Mm-hmm. And, and not Cause I, I see, I see that, I see that even with our generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's you know, it's always the bad and the good. Like we, a lot of times we talk about the bad right. in, um in our right. uh, generation. You know, millennials or whatever. But it's actually is I see some good in it too because like you got oh, a no, lot of people that yeah you got a lot of you got a lot of people that's like you know like um that that's like well damn you know our parents really didn't raise us you know what I'm saying and I don't want to be I don't want my children to grow up feeling the same way you know what I'm saying yeah you do have a have a a good amount of people who do that and like your generation is tends to be healthier. Like it's rejecting like a lot of the yeah exactly the, like yeah. fast food and it's rejecting a whole lot of this it's rejecting a lot of unwoke shit like it you know right because we got a lot we got we got a lot to explain now <laughs> it's a lot to yep it's a lot of explaining that you know we want from that previous generation it's like what the hell were you doing and why are, you know what I'm saying why yep. are things like you know we gotta change some shit. Um, definitely that's a, that's a fucking, a, a fuck up, not with my generation, but with my parents' generation with baby boomers. Like, baby boomers did fuck some shit up, I'm not even gonna lie. Every, <laughs> everybody blame everything on baby boomers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Greatest generation. Um, yeah, okay. They're, they're, between them and you guys, they're the loudest. My generation just gets shit done. We don't really say much. Like, I noticed that even in my office that I work in. Mm. Like, all the all the baby boomers in there have to be seen. All the all the um, millennials have to be seen and hurt. The Gen Xers just be like, oh, you got to do this? Okay, give it to me. They turn around, get it done, bring it back, and it's done, and, you, and they're doing something else. And they're like, oh, you did that? You're like, oh, yeah, it's finished. Like, y'all coming up. We don't really, we're not like that because we're a smaller cohort, so we don't. We don't bring attention to ourselves. We just, but when you don't toot your own horn, everybody assumes you didn't do shit, which is not true. Right, right. Is that but, stupid? Look, people like the posture, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is out to lunch. And... So heading into... Um, second period I just I feel like you know I don't know what we can do to counteract like like what do we do to counteract all this fuck boy and simping and pimping and this Peter Pan shit and in the in in my Peter Pan scenario the only women that that are in Never Neverland are Wendy's and Wendy is basically your ride or die you know wifey like you don't marry mm-hmm. her but you know she's your wifey and then oh, you know a, <laughs> then a then a, a fucking tinkerbell i think we all know a tinkerbell is a side chick and tinkerbell is a side chick <laughs> yeah tinkerbell oh, yeah. is a side chick watch the movie again dog yeah <laughs> and she and she always okay. in your ear telling you you know this and that and she's always riding out with you when you ride out with your dudes and she's all up in your ear saying fuck that wendy and she but she's always there with you and then (laughs) (laughs) and the other woman is 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 the tiger lily which is tiger lily is the ungettable get she's the one that you that you fetishize that you dream about unicorn Exactly. Mythical unicorn. <laughs> she's she's the fucking non-existent perfect woman that you are looking at in pictures, and and is is largely about 
servicing your dick and your ego. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like that, none of that is fucking legitimate. That's not what real life is. Yeah. You know. I I'll never watch like, that. I'm sorry. That that uh. <laughs> That that Tinkerbell uh, that Tinkerbell metaphor got me messed up because people I'm really sorry. are clap people really are clapping for the side chick now. Dude. They are. They clapping. Well, they they turn their side chicks into their wives and they marry these chicks. They romanticize it. Romanticize yep, you got you got clap to keep the fairy alive. For those that don't know. <laughs> I hate you. <here. laughs> That's what's going on. But I mean, you can't you can't push that woman up. First of all, most women aren't like this whole Madonna whore thing. That the shit is bogus. Most women, again, are somewhere yeah. in the middle of that. They're not Madonna. They're not a whore. They're a human being like you who likes to get down when they like to get down, and they like to handle their business when they handle their business. Uh. And then whenever else they they, they want to do what they you know handle their life be out there living life so if you if you big up and you keep pushing up and you keep caping and and doing this stuff for for your for your tinkerbell first of all you can't you won't be able to recognize an actual woman when you see one if you're always big up in your tinkerbell and you you cut yourself off from seeing that so now all women ain't shit because in your mind a woman is Tinkerbell but that's not the case what you gotta check your own values in that situation what do you value what are you drawing to yourself it's your fucking karma and you'll never be able to bad Tiger Lily if you come at her like she's Tinkerbell but see all women She's either going to be come at like Tinkerbell or they're going to come at her like she's a Wendy. They don't know how to mm-hmm. integrate Wendy and Tinkerbell and Tiger Lily. You both throw them all together and you pick one woman that, that encompasses all of those things together for you. I don't know if men do that though. What do you guys think? Because it seems like men compartmentalize. That's what, that's what a whole um, Madonna horror shit comes from. They don't think a woman is a whole being where she, one person can be everything. That's true. That's true. Good point. But I mean, I mean, you're missing out. How do we? How do we fucking I'm, change this shit? Falling error. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I think. Uh, I, I think it's just the way. I think it's just the way we. You know. It. Like you, if you if you dealing with um the girl that you feel, uh you know you want that to be, you want that to be wifey or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't yeah. you don't want to you don't want to look at her like you know, uh the way you, you look at put her for certain things. Right? Yeah. You you going you want you want you want to put her on a, a certain a different type of pedestal no, than somebody. But you, but you but you can't do that. And that's what my point is. Women are right. not subhuman. Not they're not subhuman. Yeah. They're not superhuman. We're just human. Not if you're going to spend the rest of your life with this person. Yeah. You're going to spend the rest of your life with this person. You got to have all your needs fulfilled. She's a person just like you are. You can't keep putting her high up or down low. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, I and same there. thing. It's not fair to make you all either up high or down low because then when you fall off that shit. I yeah. can't make you like, oh, you know, he's going to be the man to take care of everything. I'm not going to work or do anything. And he's going to take when you fall off that shit, you fall far. And now you aren't a man uh, anymore yeah. because you are not able to handle your business. And then men are out there killing themselves and their whole families because they couldn't do what a man's supposed to do. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, that's. I feel like that's going that's going to happen sometimes though. Like just depending on the type of person you are. Like if you look at like um um uh Coretta Scott King. Like as far as I know, she didn't marry anybody after Martin. No. And like how how, how 
Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, like well, you know, I mean, sometimes. Um, uh, uh, what's name didn't 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 remarry either? I don't think. Um, no, she didn't. Um, Betty. Betty. Yeah, Betty did. Yeah, Betty didn't remarry. See, yeah, but see, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like you know, like you know, you you gotta be a you know a thorough boy to replace those those guys in their life. Like, that's true, but... Yeah. And I feel like I feel like a lot of times I feel like a lot of times men men feel that way about their women. Like you know they they put these like you might have a you might have that female in your life that you just felt like you know she was the end all be all and it's like you know if something never went wrong or whatever it's like how do I how do I fill that void? I can't fill that void with well that's just okay. I don't, think, I don't see anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is you can't look at her and not see her as a complete human being. Right, exactly. I, that's what I was saying before, like, with me and my personal situation, it was trial and error. Like, I went and I came at certain people in a certain way. And, like, now I feel like, I feel like Maureen is talking to me. You know, because I, I, we had those conversations. We go there, we talk about certain stuff, we try different things and all that. Right. She ain't with, she ain't with it, she ain't with it. But, I mean, but I still it. think it, it, it's too, it's that balance thing. Like, you gotta... You have to understand yeah. that 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 there's some place in the middle and not the end of two extremes all the time. Because I mean, then you and even then, you, then you out here like some these, of these things. What like like what like romance? Whatever. No, <laughs> I'm talking about what's your significant other. Like if there's, oh, if there's okay. things you you want to do or things that you like that, then I feel like your significant other should know that. You know, don't I mean, assume that they're not going. They're That's not going to be with it. That's true. I mean, I think it's, 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 it's a deficit to everybody, to men and women, when you are cutting yourself off from your right. own humanity, like with this MGTOW shit, with this men going their own way bullshit. Like this, the extreme, <laughs> this extreme hatred of women and like the opposite of you know this of the feminist and the you know the the, the hyper feminist movement. Like we don't need a hyper feminist movement. We don't need a hyper masculine movement. We don't need hatred. No, at all. We don't so do need. The, do, go ahead. Do the do the MGTOWs fall into the bromance uh, conversation? I think so I because because their whole thing is that you cut yourself off from you know any any excuse me any romantic relationship with women and marriage like you know that's destructive. That it is, and they they believe in you know having a manosphere. Like now, here's my question. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like their community is the, you know, is is the manosphere. That's where you're supposed to. Oh you know. no, oh, that's where the brony. Look, they 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 believe that's where the brony. They believe that, that's that worse any than... any any legal or romantic entanglement. Or relationships with women, women are not cost effective. Oh gosh! They don't like. They don't like. They don't like that women are what they call hypergamous, which means marrying up or like marrying higher than your class. Like, but here's my thing: men want to fuck upward. So if men, when, when, when you are in a situation where you're just as superficial, why are you pointing at the other person calling them superficial in the midst of your own superficiality? <laughs> Immature insecurity. Immature insecurity. Because you want to fuck up, so why wouldn't they want to marry up? It's the same fucking thing. Here's my question, though. Here's my question. So they 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 believe in either Mikhail believe that either short term engagements, you know, with women or sex with like prostitutes or being celibate. Where the fuck are you going? How are you going to procreate, you dumb assholes? What are your 
community is going to look like. Tour. Everything about that. That's what that. says it's, it's gonna like if you think it's bad now, you think it's bad now with the single parent households. Like imagine how that's gonna look. That's stupid. That's stupid. Yeah, just, yeah. The next, the next generation, that, the works. next generation got like the got a lot to fight against. It does. Because I mean, I mean, when you're not getting that, then you're getting you know all this the shit in the hip hop that we've you know, unfortunately big up since we started the whole gangster rap promotion back, you know, in the in the late eighties and nineties during my generation, you know, with the whole bros over hoes. We all love these hoes. Hoes, hoes, hoes. Love it for your bros. I feel like, I feel like that was misunderstood. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> nah. I don't think it was. was misunderstood. Because all women aren't all women aren't old. But but that's what they it's a it's the same thing as equating your Tinkerbell with all women. Right, right. All so women hey, ain't it's Tinkerbell. Just, it's just so we don't, so we don't okay, holes, so, so, like. so so tell me then where this whole because like I mean we started out you know with like you know the the all that West Coast temp shit. Mm. You know that, like the IC started a lot of that. You know, and, and even then yeah. too short. You know, <clears throat> even before you had like Snoop Dogg and them doing that stuff, and you know, then you had like the dog pound coming through. Same thing. This obsession with groupie wasn't culture. Was married at the time? No, he he had a IC long. Wasn't married yet. He had no, a they long got married. Didn't they get part. married like right before uh, Friday he came out or something? He didn't. He didn't marry the one he had the his first child with. The one you got her, Darlene. Darlene is the one he married. Okay. The one his album covers is not Coco. Yeah, I know. From back in the day, so he was with yeah, her all the years ago when he was. Oh, y'all talking about Ice T? Yeah. Yeah, Ice T. Oh, I thought that was. He wasn't quite. No, Ice T. Ice T was a married but... man with with children. He's a fucking family man. Yeah. Yeah. He was never anything like like any of that stuff. I mean, he might have talked to. The... He he did say a bitch is a bitch. He also made Nappy Dugout, as we keep talking. But <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he does not, he didn't live that. He Like, he's right. a married man who has children. I, I feel like that's the part of the problem, though, is the fact that people You're right. are listening to him say these things, but they don't know that he's not about that life. And Snoop, too. Snoop, too. Married man with children. Not saying he, he, yeah. he out there doing bad shit, but... I mean, we don't hear about it. It's not like you're hard pressed to find a whole lot of dirt on either one of those dudes or either Dre. Either. Dre's dirt was all done before he got rich. For the most part. The most I heard about Dre. <laughs> the only thing I heard about Dre after that is like Dre was actually in Superhead's book. She, she talked about dealing with him and, and he was married at that time. If I can. I've never read her book. Line. Yeah, that's. Um, I was mad at. Her. I was mad at her. But that was out. That was popping when I was in high school. Yeah, you know, I read that school. shit while while you were guys in high school. I read that book. I told y'all about me yeah, reading I was, that book. I was I was kind of mad at that book. Well, like, I mean you're. Go. I mean, but you're out here. You're still out here, and like guys are gonna say, "Well, guys are gonna do what guys are gonna do." Yeah. But but where is your responsibility in all of that shit? Nobody wants to claim responsibility. You got a whole generation but full of children. But you have to if you're going to be an adult. I agree. I agree. That's why I don't think that that whole thing was like misunderstood. Because, I mean, you created a scenario where where all women are now hoes. Like, I mean, look at Chris Brown. These hoes ain't loyal. Like, why would a fucking hoe be loyal? She's a hoe. <laughs> what the hell is this song even about? <laughs> Why are you making this dumbass nonsensical song about about hoes not being loyal? <laughs> right. See, but yeah, that people. That's just, I would, that's I just where it is. Man. I would ask people that in the street, and they would look at me like I was crazy. Like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I'm like, why would a hoe be loyal? She's a hoe. She's not supposed to be loyal. She, she, she's like, do you not for, know the definition of the word? Do you not know what a hoe is? 
A hoe is rolling for Dolo all day. <laughs> Why would she be loyal to you? But it's because they're equating all women to hoes and that they don't want to say right. it, but that's what's being done. I don't think they every realize woman, they're doing every, it. Every no, yes they do, cause they, cause they're talking. Fuck these hoes, like fuck your mom too. Then. They don't. Ho, ho means something different to a certain group of people. It does apparently now, but that, but hip hop has helped normalize that stupid shit. True. Sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sorry. And that's why we got bromance. I'm sorry. Hey, I need a doctor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I like that song. <laughs> I like that song. I'm good. I don't need. I don't need a doctor that bad. <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> All right. How would you feel if you was in the booth with Nas and he asked you how his bar sound? I mean, you're like, in the Yo, man, booth, this, though. This out, you're in the studio and Nas is looking at you for inspiration. Aren't you gonna nope. call him out on his stuff? I mean, you're in the booth with him. Studio. He looking at you for inspiration. I should go feel some kind of way. <laughs> I mean, you know, it would be that would be like a it would be a humbling experience. But I feel like Nas is that type of artist too. Like it would be like, um, you know, like Nas is a humble dude. That's the same as like, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> what? What's so funny? No, you know like that's, I mean. that's, you know, that's really I'll be how saying, it is. Put yourself, put yourself in M shoes, like. Boy, this is his idol. That is no. I need a doctor is vastly different than just turning to your boy for inspiration. That yeah. shit is romantic. <laughs> it's not romance. turning to your boy. It's turning to it's turning. What's that? It's turning to your um protege for inspiration. Look, it's not look, somebody we, you we all. I think we all watch the defiant ones at this point. They talked yeah. about their relationship and how they they interacted with one another. Like every look. Every segment that you go through with Dre, he talks about his bromances. And tell me he fucking <laughs> didn't. Tell me he didn't. Well, he's he's from the era that <laughs> popularized that though too. He is like he talks about his bromance with Easy, which he's I will a not bromance be able to do. I will, I will not he's be able to do. Stop big up that shit, please. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about his romance with you know with um with Easy you know God rest the dead. He talked about mm-hmm. his romance with DOC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am not I am not fully convinced that DOC does not have Stockholm. He talked about his romance. With- <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Hey yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He seen, he seen some things hanging around Dre and them. Has been easy. Talk about his bromance with um with Snoop. And then they yeah. bring M on. That that bromance, that bromance thing, that bromance thing is real, dog. Like it I don't is. know. I know I know now, you wanna what's the difference? What's I know you I, I know you like I know yeah. you like that song or whatever, but like that's that's not weird to you when you can make a whole song <laughs> like that about Dre. <laughs> And then, but then at the same time, you got a whole song called Superman, where it's like I don't love these hoes. And then you got, then you got uh him killing, he killing his mom, he killing his girlfriend, throwing her in the trunk and all this shit. But he loved his bro though. He married, he married his girl. I understand on in real life. Dr. Dre though, he did talk about killing Dre in in a song though. Nobody was safe in the Eminem song. Nobody was safe. He did. He did talk about that. killing Dre in one of his songs and locking. She's like, she's like, Dre is dead, locked up in the basement. He did. <laughs> if there was anybody else other than Eminem, I would, I would agree. <sighs> but Eminem is kind of off the wall. Like you can never tell for Eminem. You know what? Back to the, see, you know what? Never mind. The I ain't gonna touch on that. Look, DLC and and Dre on. No one can do it better. And if you have not yet seen the recurring theme of of Ant with D Block and me with the DOC, then you're not listening to the show enough. So <laughs> the that's DLC another point I was going to bring up. And Dre, DOC and Dre have the correct level of of brohood. Like like he's he's shouting him out on his records, but he's the DJ, and you're supposed to that's- hype your DJ. As an MC, 
Yeah, it's like it's like deep to rhyme. You gotta hype your DJ. That's an acceptable level of brohood, I think. In in hip hop, uh, that was that was my question. Is what's the difference between romance and like just camaraderie? Because but camaraderie is expected in hip hop. I expect that shit. But riding hard like all your love to your bros oh, give us, and all these songs give us some about your bros and. And how you was out mm-hmm. here fucking with these bro, like you know, me and my right. bro Com- camaraderie. Like, camaraderie is more camaraderie. Like uh, as far as an example, the best example I always go to is like native tongues. Like they always, they yeah. always like show um, love for each other, and it all, and it was never like just a whole. It was never just like you know my bro type thing because they talk about like Queen Latifah was affiliated and all and Moni and Love and Moni Love, like that. yeah. Like you would never call Queen of People or Moni Love a hoe. Nope. No. Nah. Never. But but, never. but very 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 different. Like that's that's going over into our you know in that Jensen conscious level where yeah. they you don't do that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. That, that's and you know how you you know how you know that whole that the whole bromance thing is so destructive because like this like this um like if you notice like that was a uh, a big part of um the whole Jay-Z and Nas beef because if you look at yeah. Nas career if you look at Nas career like people can always point out uh songs where it was like you know where they where you might call Nas a simp or whatever you know what I'm saying yep. where he got songs like uh picture is married and you know uh, well, Nas said, I love that fuck song. you Nas says like he literally in an interview or like on a what which song was that on life is good where he says fuck all y'all dog dumbasses he was like I had the courage to make this woman, my wife, and not just right, right, uh, yeah, yeah, be out uh-huh. here with her acting like a child, right? Where he said you don't, <laughs> what do you say? He said you do. I just uh, want to my tongue. Yeah, he said you don't had a know, right? heart, you don't had a heart to make her your bride or something like that. Yep. It was on right. the um, what was it on? Bye, baby. The end yeah. of Bye, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, yeah, yeah, it's, love that yeah, song it's Bye, too. baby. Mhm. Love that song. Me too. You know how good it was to see Aaron Hall in the video? See, that's why everybody gets on my nerves saying, you know, like hype in 444. Life is Good was one of the first adult ass oh. grown man albums that I fucking heard. And it came from Life my favorite is good was, Life is Good is I loved it. I loved it. You I loved it. He fucking the first time talked I played about it. his daughters. He talked about having to raise a daughter. He talked about his his relationship. He talked about what it was to be an adult out here in these streets. That shit was adult. Right. Yeah. But see, that's, that's see, that's that's how you know, that's how you know the direction that hip-hop is in when, like, you know, Jay-Z, the guy who's never had that type of narrative in any of yeah. his songs. Like, Jay-Z never had a narrative Not of, you know... Extent. Not to that extent. Mm-mm. Yeah, like, of, of you know... Of, 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 you know, um... Of loving, of loving a female outside of you know uh, superficial ways, you know, what right. I mean? like yeah. never. He never had, he never had that type of song in his catalog, and people oh, praised it. He was all campish. He was all yeah, campish. People, yeah, people praised that, but like when he for Jay Z back when they were beefing, like Jay Z could call out, he could call out Nas and say, you know, and basically call him a simp. You know what I'm saying? Because of certain mm-hmm. songs in his catalog, and like people praised that. They did. You're right. With Jada, but, and the reason, the reason why I say 444 is pandering is because I feel like that was a calculated decision. Like yeah. he didn't want to go the way of like the other older artists before him who put out an album and it just flopped because they were on the same old thing that they were always on. Mm-hmm. Or they, or they try to be um, like try to be like go that route and be young, and that's not some shit that Jay is gonna do. So he, he right, I yeah. think he was just forced to grow the fuck up. And I think he was, he's forced to relent. Like, like, like we just talked about earlier, you can't fucking be the 48 year old dude in the club for the rest of your damn life. You have to stop right. being a Peter Pan at some point. Right. Right. And the same, you gotta like, stop the making big decisions. I think that's why Royce 5 9 is so, um, is, his music sounds the way it sounds now because he left about, the, the bars and all of that, but he's putting more emotional content into it. You know what? Because that's and I what people like look for from a 35-year-old rapper. I like that you're saying that because remember that that's what I sent y'all the other day we were talking about Andre Benjamin, unfortunately, 
three sex made those yeah. dumbass dumbass comments agree. about Asian and hip hop. I don't agree because, like we said, I'm not like, saying I agree with Andre. Was, I agree with the other uh, guy. The well, guy with the because girl. because oh yeah yeah because um so many people that we're looking at are making the best some of the best shit of their careers right I, now and they're adults. I agree. Yep. And this shit Absolutely. is needed. It's needed. Voice, voice has never been better. Never. Like, I would rather play 444 than, at this point, than play, oh my God, the second album. Oh my God. Like, if I hear Face Off, Face Off is like one of the most offensive fucking pieces of... This goes out to our brother. You feel me? Fuck, fuck him and Soft Money for that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that shit. You won't get but no that, argument here. Oh my god, that shit is so damn disrespectful though, Aaron. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like <laughs> like and just like the things that Jay has said before, like there's what's that song on um Dynasty where he says put the head on a better bitch? Like, oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See that's why that's, that's like that is why I sat out. Yeah, me too. He, I mean, he just, 44 is great. He did that whole emotionless pimp thing <laughs> for a. But if you okay, I read Carmen's book. Okay. How was it? That Carmen's book is Nas's baby mom's book, and Carmen, you know, Carmen had the that whole you know relationship trifecta. That ended in doom with her and um, with Nas and Jay Z. She said his behavior in real life was nothing like that pimp persona he was showing. Yeah, now, Carmen, I say that. I'm not sure if I don't believe that Carmen can be objective, though. You know? Why? why? That's why I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to read her book. Cause I feel like she's going to try to paint herself in a particular light. No, she she was what? foul in the book. She, she comes off foul. Even, yeah. if she doesn't even though, it, even she, though does. she tried to make it seem like she wasn't. <laughs> yeah, she comes off foul. Yeah, that's, um, I'm hesitant to read it. Not as foul as that Vlad interview, but yeah, foul. <laughs> so another another um another song that we usually talk about in the bromance conversation is um Kanye's Big Brother. That was- yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna I ask y'all like what y'all think how y'all think how y'all think uh his relationship with Jay affected his relationship with Kim. <laughs> After listening to um. Who was that talking about how Beyonce and Kim were two completely different people? Yeah. And that's that's probably why... I think it's the other way around. Kanye it's the other so, way around. I think his... Well, I can his, dealings both with, his dealings with Kim affected his relationship with Jay. Like, Jay doesn't yeah. like that kind of sensationalist bullshit. They're very private. They're very private. Yeah. yeah both of them. Jay yeah. and Beyonce are very they private. They are. And well, they Kim need and to be. Kanye are both very out there. Yeah, they are. They're very public, and they're they're public in a way that is obnoxious and yeah. and overbearingly yeah. so. Like I don't, yeah. I just don't want to see you taking damn near nude selfies. Like, please stop it. Do you think the bromance? Do you think the uh? Do you think uh the bromance thing is like more so uh equated to money too? Yeah. No. Because because a lot of times a lot of a lot of times in these conversations you hear like Eminem, you know, and Dre like they talk about oh you know he saved my life because I was at a point in my career where you know I didn't think I was ever going to come back or whatever and I I felt like you know and like they they always talk about like how their situation changed when they. You know, when I finally hooked up with Dre, you know, life changed for the better. Same thing with Kanye well, and Jay Z. Like it was like with Kanye, Eminem he was just didn't like, have a career. He didn't have a career before Dre. He yeah, did I know, that's kind of sort of, but I mean, he he was he was humping out there in these streets. Right. He was, yeah. but, he was, but, he was climbing the ladder. He was climbing the ladder, but Dre wasn't. He was. Dre, no, Dre. Dre he wasn't. Dre wasn't Dre level. 
Yeah, Dre wasn't the same as he. Dre wasn't at his no. at his high point anymore. Dre was you like. Are, Dre you was, are defiant ones. He was. They were both dope. in a. No, but he was saying in defiant ones they both said they were both at a low point. Eminem yeah. was oh, yeah, homeless. Yeah. Dre had just come off that aftermath and the firm both flopping. Hold I on, don't. I get to the firm flop though. I don't. I don't fucking buy it to the firm. Uh, Dr. Dre low point for an underground artist is still Dre. But it's still different. Okay, how low is the Remember, uh, uh, remember, remember um, Jimmy Iovine was saying that <clears throat> Interscope was like, drop his ass, drop him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were both at but, a very low point. All it means, and is yeah. if you Eminem, drop from a Eminem, point Eminem, that, Eminem. Like, that Dre is at, you have father to fall. Your shit will make a louder noise than, yep. than Eminem's will. Eminem, so, Eminem, so, saved, so. Eminem saved Dre's career. He said it himself. Yeah, they both said it. I don't know how much of a gamble it is to gamble on Eminem, because, I mean, he's Eminem, and he, he, he didn't was white. enough to lose. Dre ain't had nothing else to lose. Right. But M had if everything, Eminem was M had black, in the game. If M was black M and he was gambling on a on a on a shock rapper, that might actually make sense. But yeah. I feel like people were going to accept it, him for that. It's the same. It's the same argument with Kanye though, because all in Big Brother, you know what I'm saying? He talk about like how you know uh, uh, he wouldn't be at the place he is in his life if it wasn't for Jay, Jay, put, yeah. Jay putting him on so and all like, that. You like Big Brother, but not I need a doctor. Huh? But, I don't. Well, I don't. He was, still out there though he like Kanye nah, I never said cool. I never said I don't I never said I don't like that song it's just like you know it's uncomfortable to listen to both <laughs> you know what I'm saying you said like, and I quote <laughs> you said you said and I quote is gay sex on wax it is <laughs> both of them both songs are both songs are <laughs> I don't know if I agree with Big Brother Big Brother is not quite gay sex on wax now I need a doctor I need a doctor in some next level shit. I don't. I, I don't really see the difference that. between the only difference. The only difference between the two songs to me is that Dr. Dre was on one of them. Like the person I think being the talked about was on the song. I think the song. difference is that that Kanye is just talking about how he looks up to Jay and sort. He's sort of kind of making it and putting it in a different lane, calling him his big brother. It's it. That mm-hmm. to me is more like. I was talking about it shows like a, a, a kind of a normal level of of men interacting with one another and, and having a camaraderie brotherhood is fine it, uh-huh. it's when you take that shit to the next level and and all your dudes get all of your romantic love that you would give to a woman and women get your dick in a hole yep pretty much yeah, That's I, was how gonna, I was gonna <laughs> ask about that I was gonna ask about that in reference to the lock. So they did a song called um, Brother Keeper. Yep. Not too long ago. Like, is, are they in the romantical realm? I think I heard that song. What do you guys think? Yeah. A lot of a lot of rappers in the Brothers Keeper in the in the uh, in that bromantical realm. Like Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse got a song called Brothers Keeper that sounds just like that too. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there anything wrong what, about, with uh, what about Wu Tang? What about Wu Tang and, and their brotherhood? I was gonna mention them too. I was gonna mention them too. The the issue the issue that I have is not the fact that these songs exist. Is that there's nothing to balance like Ms. Mitchell always talking about having balance. Like it's nothing to balance yeah. them out where mm-hmm. you feel like they had that same type of they don't have that same type of energy when it comes to the women in their lives. And there was in my generation in the golden era of of hip hop. We had plenty of songs that balanced that shit out. When did when did the decline come in? When gangster rap came in, because you don't love these hoes. That's why hoes ain't loyal. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like when, like I said earlier, when they were saying we don't love these hoes, they had a specific group of people in mind, not just every woman. But and uh, no. again, at first, yes. But then it became normalized that you just treat every woman. Yeah, every woman becomes a Tinkerbell and you just say, oh, just get treated like this now. Because, But part of it is, again, what I keep talking about, it's, it's the value system that you yourself hold. You have to keep putting that mirror back onto yourself. Stop putting it out onto the universe. Who are right. you? 
and what are I you th- going after? Yeah, I still I still equate the whole bromance thing to money though. Like that's what it seemed like it all boils down to. It's like because like if you think about I'm, one particular line that comes to mind is uh DMX on uh on uh uh make a move where he say I spend my money on niggas cause niggas give me rich and a bitch ain't doing shit but sucking my dick. You know what I'm saying? It's like so many questionable bromance moments. I can't even like if I sat right. here and did this <laughs> shit with you, we'd be yeah. still in this chair by next And Sunday. DMX DMX also is a lot suspect a lot of times when you equate when you uh add on the jail culture thing to his yep. Exactly, mm-hmm. the jail culture and the drug culture. Yeah, it's a, it does. A lot, it's of, a, so, a lot of variables. So, a lot of has to leave us. So let's 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 quickly do recess real real fast. And, right. Um, <laughs> that's okay. You know, you guys, you gotta, you gotta um dip from your bro and and go be with your lady. <laughs> I have to go spend quality time. It's so ironic that this is my situation on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but that's so not romantic. You got to go be a man and do your man thing. Yep, and she walked around with me for a, little, a couple blocks, so I do appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, Aunt, give us so recess before we pull out. Give us recess before you have to Who did I say before? I said Papoose. I said Papoose. <laughs> you Papoose know who I actually home want to say? Time. This sounds so crazy. <laughs> Guess who I want to I wanna throw out there? Who? Who's that? 21 Savage. Oh, wow. Really? I that. But, I that. I, but I told y'all the reason why this before, because everybody was coming at him so hard. Like, you ain't supposed Whoa. to love these hoes. Then he gets with a woman. I'm, I'm going to pull the fact that she's, that the that the woman in question is Amber Rose out of the equation, okay? Let's just because <laughs> okay. that shit is gonna fuck okay. the argument up anyway. Let's just say it's a it's a woman well, that's not it, Amber it, Rose. It. Yes, it will. Cause that shit is definitely a Tinkerbell situation. Let's just say yeah. that she's you know just a woman, and he's saying that's not how you deal with your lady. Right. He said that several times. He said, he, said, he said, that's my lady. I'm going to be like, I'm going to bar my soul. I'm going to be mm-hmm. like this with my lady. I'm not going to act like that. He's like, how should I act with my lady? I'm supposed to be all hard and rough and punch her in the face. That's not how you do your lady. Yeah. I wonder that's if she a, taught him that or if he was already No, like I don't think so. I think he was already like that. And that's one grown ass man thing. And then on, he has a line on one of his songs where he talks about you talking about, you know, know. You know, know. well, <laughs> I've heard people say this, where he talks about, <laughs> dudes be talking about how, you know, you don't love these hoes, he said, but then you gonna, you gonna, this dude that, that that's gonna rat you out, you gonna mm. talk about how you love him all fucking day long. That right. was a direct right. romance incident right there. Um, he literally dressed bro about the same thing. Yep. I saw it. Talking about the same thing yes. on Breakfast Club, yeah, yeah, that was impressive. Yeah, I like, I do like, um, Papoose for this conversation though, because um, he stayed home like, the whole time. His wife was in jail. Yeah, he, 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 he club, not held one. it down. And you know what? You know what I noticed really too. Did. You know what I noticed too, and I think it's because it's who it is. I didn't see a lot of people like um giving him. Like a uh, uh, backlash for doing it. I didn't see like you know no, a lot right. of people calling him out as a right. simp or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I see a lot mm-hmm. more respect I, for him in that regard. I kind of did. <laughs> yeah. How? Yeah. I never saw it. I did. But I mean, it was it was it joking. I was in jest. I was I was joking. Yeah, I, had, I, I can see that. Yeah. I didn't see anybody else giving him grief like that. Yeah, I didn't see him catching hell. Like but a lot gets, of dudes would have, a lot of dudes would have caught hell for that. He gets, he gets a lot of problems for that. Yeah, and I like, I like the way he, I like the way he go about it when he deal with her too. I do too. Because like, um, Remy was in an interview. I don't know if it was Hot ninety seven or Breakfast Club, and she was talking about how um he had to school her, like you know, just the way they raised their kids. Um, he was uh, yeah, because. According to her, he grew up in a two-family household, and he always saw pictures of his uh, mom and dad wetting pictures and stuff on the walls, and he wow. wanted them to do the same thing. And she wouldn't understand why he wanted that, and he was like, "Why would you to... not do that? That's your fucking 
family. Right, but you know, you guys, yeah. they both come from two different situations. So that like, you know, he had, bad though. Right, he had to yeah. let her know, like, you know, he want their kids to come up seeing that, you know, between them, that type of, uh, that type of relationship. All right now, Papu, I ain't mad at you. Yeah. I like I that. I don't know. I do too. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Um, let's see. Homework. So next week is um the What Happens to R and B show, I believe. And we touched on R and B before. So the only homework I would say that we should give out for the next show is to listen to our show about hip hop and R and B. <laughs> get yourself get yourself refreshed on on hip hop R and B. And if you did not watch the mask you live in, the documentary is available on Netflix. Go back and give that a, a look. It's it's really good. It'll you know kind of um bring you to some understanding. I'm I'm sure some men will probably look at that and start talking all that this is some feminist bullshit it's feminist yeah. propaganda trying yeah, to right, feminize right. us we want our men to be able to be well rounded individuals and be men because as we said before when you are vibrating that low you turn into this animalistic creature and you get funneled into the fucking prison system or you get sent to go off and fight wars and get killed because it's the only thing you're good for. You need to realize yourself as a full human being. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good show, you guys. That was. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> And I had no out. cause. I had I had no cause at any point to hit to hit the impending doom button. I feel proud. You don't know in this conversation. Um, nah. But he he fell into conversations that you wouldn't think he fell into when we had to hit the bell. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. His name got mentioned on the fucking prison culture show. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's our show today. You know, we gotta go to let Ann do his thing. And um, I am so much. make sure you join us until next time. School is now officially out.